The next major item I would like to talk about are splines. There's a variety of splines as, as, there, as there is a variety of objects. There are several different splines available to use and uh, you usually use them in conjunction with one of these nerves which I will go over these later but for now I want I want you to keep in mind something very simple about splines. If we middle click on the mouse button we bring up our different views top, front, right. You can also click this button here. Okay splines need to be drawn on a flat surface. Now see there's a variety of splines and generally what sets them apart is the algorithm that's used to actually bend the spline across sets of points. Now I usually like to use linear but it really there's real no great restriction. Let's use a Bezier, Bezier curve. Now we middle click the mouse button and we hover over the top view and middle click on that. Now you can you can draw you can draw even you can draw a spline in the perspective view. I don't really recommend that because you see in the top view this is what it looks like. So we alt left alt left click and drag. We can see what's going on here. Hmm. Control Shift Z. So Control Z undo that. So let's go into the top view, middle click. Then we can click and drag. Hmm. Oh, you gotta reselect your tool. All right, we can click and drag, and we can start drawing the tool. Then I get on a linear spline. B spline. Oh, oh, I'm on a B spline. Excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> All right, click. Then we'll get a curve. Well, if we don't start another spline. Okay, B is your spline. Click and drag. Just like the pen tool inside of Photoshop, uh, I know most people may hate the pen tool. I love the pen tool, but that's me. Now, if you want to change this curve, you can change the type right here. Now, if you want it linear, you can change it to linear. Cubic, Akima, B spline, or Bezier. Now, if we go back to our selection tool with the space bar here. We notice we can uh, we have these little controls here, but if we click, nothing will happen. It'll try to select something. To overcome that, <coughs> we just click on the move tool here, or E if you remember your shortcut keys, and then we can click and drag the handles. Now we also you can reuse modifiers if we hold down on Alt button or the Shift button. If we hold down on the Shift button as we're moving this, then we can move the spline separately. Now, let's say maybe you're not happy with that. Maybe you want to undo that. You can right click. Excuse me. Alright. You go back into your selection mode. Right click on this. And there you got these different options available here. You can go to equal tangent length, which will make make them equal. But notice they're still, they're still slanted. They're still at an angle. Or you can make them the same direction, equal tangent direction and then they're back to normal again go back to our move tool, E key click and drag this we can move it around once again now if you want a lot of control you can double click on this and actually get all the values you'd like and the, of the tangents and, and the point itself where it's located you see this same so you have a lot of control over just one point and it's and it's easier controls right here. Oop. Right clicking does no good unless you're in the selection tool. Alright, you can you can break a segment, you can join a segment. Like that. We just broke those. Take this. Join segments. Okay, and we've joined those two back together. Usually you don't join points together. That usually doesn't work out too well. And just undo that a few times. So if we break this segment, I'm gonna join segments back together. Join segment. Select this points again. Join segment. So we have some control. We're gonna go back to the object mode. We can we can just change our spline. We can here. The intermediate points that determines how many points it actually has around it, as you would expect. You can adjust your curve 
There's not a lot you can see here, but it gets a little bit more definition. The lower you go, the maximum length, the shorter it is between each point actually across here. Not that you see them, though. These are just the control points. Now, go over a couple of different other splines here. Go back into perspective view. Alright, you got your basic circle, your arc, rectangle. Not a lot to these. You can adjust the angle of these. So however you'd like. So you can make it a square if you actually wanted to. Not that I recommend that. If you're going to do that, what you would use is the inside. You can actually adjust how many sides it has. Which I found find very useful most of the time. I usually don't use circle. We just select these and hit the delete key and get rid of them. Cog wheel. You have several different options on here, just the same. And just the angle right here. Of course, we're not going to see any difference because these points are sharp. Adjust the teeth. Adjust the bevel. So you get a lot of different options. The flare gives you a little bit more control. You delete that. Now we're going to adjust the angle and actually see the differences. See how it's a lot harder. Makes those edges harder for every point. And just the amount of pedals we have. Or we can bring it in. Make the edible button. Or make edible button. We can select the points individually now. Notice they're Bezier curves. Probably has much to do with how we actually had it set up here. And the intermediate points. So if we actually left no intermediate points we get exactly what we have here. Now of course we can go back here and change the spline, change the, sp the spline type. And notice it doesn't do anything. Because it's, it's already fixed the way it is. The initial setup is very important when you actually modify any of these shapes here. And here, here are some more different objects you have. Just the controls are all right here. So you have you can adjust these however you would like for any kind of shape you could you could like to think of. So simple spring profile it has a few different options there. I guess good for extruding. Here's a funny shape. You know your math a lot more than this probably means a lot more to you. Actually, you can go to formula and program your own spline if you'd like. Not that I'm going to do that. Alright, so we have text. Of course it allows you to use text. You can you can pick a font. And you can just use whatever font you would like here. And just type something in. And it appears right there. You can extrude that. And use it as a shape. So there's there's quite a variety here. And vectorize. This is very similar to the object we saw here. Relief. It actually takes a black and white figure. But in this case, it actually makes a sp it generates a spline along at the black the black edge of one surface, or the black edge of your pixels and the white edge of your pixels. I haven't used it before. It's not all that not all that great. It's usually better to just bring your image in and, and trace over it in here unless you can just import the vectors elsewhere. Otherwise, uh, it's not too bad though. You can adjust it like you can everything else. It has options available. And there's also freehand. Not that I recommend for him, but you can always control it, just like anything else. You have you have control over it, so you can change it up, make it easier to use. So that generally covers spines. Mainly, keep in mind always in one of the views, top, front, or right view when you make a spline.